Why is the RMT striking today? We're striking because our members are now in the third year of a pay freeze, a lot of them. Um, we're being told that two billion is being stripped out of our industry and that means thousands of jobs have to be cut out, working conditions have to be torn up uh, and our people have to be made redundant and this is at a time when massive profits are being taken out of our industry and our members aren't going to accept that. Can you put a bit more context on the level of wealth inequality within the industry because like you said, profits are being made aren't you? There's money moving around. Loads of money, so there's 500 million every year being made in cold money, profits, uh, with these private companies. We've got organisations called rolling stock leasing companies which basically take taxpayers' money, buy trains and then lease them back to the railway at extortionate rates. They took three billion in the worst year of the health emergency. Lots of that money we've shown leaves this country, ends up in Guernsey, ends up in Luxembourg, Cayman Islands and places like that. We've just seen First Group, which is one of the biggest employers in the rail industry, post uh, massive profits. Just yesterday, I think they've got their AGM today, they're going to pay out 8.1 million in dividends. Their CEO, he's going to earn up to 1.6 million. So our members are looking at that and they're not stupid. They see where their money's going uh, and it's going out of this country and into tax havens which should be going into their pockets. This touches on broader themes, doesn't it? It's, yeah. not, it's not just about, obviously it's important, but it's not just about the workers here. You're talking about tax avoidance, you're talking about wealth inequality. Yeah. These are broader issues in British society. So what we've seen for the last 30, well for my whole life really, We've seen living standards falling. We've seen wages not keeping up with inflation. At the same time, profits have been escalating and going through the roof. Profits have really not exceeded inflation over the last 30, 40 years. Uh, and at the same time, our public services are being eaten alive by these private companies. They're in our NHS, they're in our railways. We've seen our education commodified. We've seen our social housing sold off. We've seen our pensions plundered. And we say that can't carry on. If we don't do something about that, then we're gonna find ourselves in a situation where people are going to be really struggling in this country for years and years to come. And it, it can't, can't carry on like that. We've got, to, we've got to do something about it. You're making these arguments right now. You have been for the last couple of weeks whilst this industrial action has yeah. been going on. And we've seen it here, just while we've been today. You know, you've got people beeping their horns, yeah. firefighters giving you a thumbs up. There's public support for this. Yeah, there is, yeah. In a way that perhaps there hasn't been in the past. I mean, you mentioned to me earlier that you, railway workers, strikers were kind of seen as the bad guys in the past. Well, we've got public support, despite the best efforts of the media, to try and pitch railway workers against nurses, teachers against railway workers. Uh, they always try to play the division card. Uh, but at the bottom of it, everyone in this country knows that they're being mugged. They know, deep down in their hearts, when their kids are going to university and they're being loaded with debt, when they can't get social housing, when they can't retire in dignity. I don't know what your parents are doing. My father worked his whole life. He's living in a council flat on a state pension and I've got to look after him. Now that's not right, not in the sixth richest economy on the planet. Not when people are taking profits out of this country at an extortionate rate. That's got to be stopped and the government's answer to the cost of living crisis is to push wages down, to criminalise dissent against poverty and to let profits and let prices rip. And we think that's got to be changed. We need a redistributive set of politics in this country that takes those profits and puts them where they need to be, in public services, in the pockets of working class families, and making sure that people can retire in dignity. Why don't you think anyone's making these arguments within British electoral politics? Well, you'd have to ask some of the politicians, but I think the politicians in this country really are aligned with the big corporations. I think they should have to wear their sponsors on their suits and on their dresses when they go into that uh, place over there. They'd look like Formula One drivers if they did. I think Liz Truss, she'd have a Pfizer sticker on her forehead and a, you know, another corporation on her elbow, if you like. You know, that's where it is. So these people don't represent the interests of the people in this country. They represent the interests of big corporations who are taking this country for a ride, and that has got to stop. In the Tory leadership debate, uh, not last night, the one before, mm. both Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss were asked whether they would legally ban strikes mm. in central services, and they both immediately said, yes, I will. Mm. What's your response to that? Well, right now, according to the Global Trade Union Congress, they do an index of trade union freedoms around the world every year. We're on the same level as Russia, right, right now, and that's regular and systematic violations of trade union freedoms in this country, the right to bargain, the right to join a union, the right to take action, and the rest of it. She wants to criminalise dissent against poverty. And if you look at what's happened, the reason people are so poor and not doing so well in the economy now is because successive governments have tried to, through politics, take away the ability of working people to bargain for better wages. Now, the Bank of International Settlements just did a study into whether there's actually a risk of a wage price spiral. So they keep saying, you can't have a pay rise because we're going to have a wage price spiral. 
Well, that's just a free card trick designed to keep people's skin because if you look at what's really going on, as I said, the Bank of Inter International Settlements has shown the inflationary impact of wages across developed economies in the West now is at zero or in negative terms. If you go back 30 years, the share of wealth that was accrued through sales in the economy that went to wages was much higher and the share that went to profits was much lower. That's completely reversed. Right now, the vast majority of it goes in the form of profits. So if you've got rising demand because the supply side of the economy's uh, screwed up through the global, global wealth emergency, you've got prices going up but wages being kept. All that means is that more is being taken out in profits. It doesn't mean anyone's getting a fair shake. It just means more profits are being taken at the expense of workers' wages. And that has got to change. And all this talk about a free, uh, about a wage price spiral is just a free card trick designed to keep people poor. There's power in the union. There is power in the union, and that is why the government's policy is to take away our ability to bargain for workers. Because what they're worried about isn't a wage price spiral. They're not even worried about whether we get a good pay rise this year. What they're really worried about in this country is a shift in class power. They're worried about the ability of people like me and people like you see behind me being able to get pay rises next year and the year after that, that eats into profits. That's what this is really about. Uh, just finally, Eddie, a word on, we were talking before we started rolling about the other strikes going on. Um, yeah. Obviously there's a lot of media attention on this one, yeah. um, probably because people are not, not being able to catch the trains today, but there's many other, many other strikes going on and they're just as important. They are just as important. I think the media attention's on us because we were the first out of the traps really, that's all. So we've got the posties coming out. We're seeing the, F the FBU, the, the fire brigades warming up. They're getting ready for strike action. The teachers are going to be looking at strike action later on in this year. We see in the NHS people getting ready for that. And I think that's right. Why should you put up with falling living standards year on year, forever? Because you're not just consigning your own people now to finding it hard in the cost of living crisis. This is about our children. This is about what type of country we have. And I think everyone in this country wants some very basic things. You want a wage you can live on, you want a house you can live in and raise a family in. You want a health service that's going to look after you when you're sick. You want education for your kids and you want to be able to retire in dignity. And every one of those things comes into conflict with the private ownership of our economy. And that's where the fight is. Really, this is about who owns what. Are we going to have a country that's run for corporations with some people in it? Or are we going to have a country that's run for the people in it that's got some corporations? And I know what I want. Cheers, Eddie. No worries, mate.